Hello everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the best platform around for distance learning in business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks for our current Patreon supporters for making this video possible, and would greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well. Please check the link in the description for more details. My name is Sava, and today we are investigating a key concept in technical analysis, that is, support and resistance levels. Do they really exist? Are there really psychological barriers for share price movements upwards or downwards around key psychological levels? And uh, most importantly, can you devise a profitable trading strategy to exploit these support and resistance levels? We'll figure all of that out in our today's video. For starters, I have got a closing price uh, daily for a two-year period, so from November 2018 until November 2020, for General Electric, so GE stock. And I have picked that because, first of all, its price is quite low in terms of dollars, and it's quite easy to determine um, key psychological barriers in terms of whole numbers of dollars. We can see in the chart on the right hand side that the price have been fluctuating around uh, 5 to 14 dollars uh, across this two year period. And we can suspect that as GE is generally quoted in dollars and traded on the New York Stock Exchange, you would see investors considering whole numbers, so whole dollar prices, so 6, 7, 8, 9, and so on, up to 13, as somewhat of a possible support or resistance level, at least psychologically. And uh, looking at the chart, we can already see something like that going on. But does this chart trick us into believing support and resistance exists? Or is it really a genuine concept? Because here we can see that around... Uh, August 2019 uh, all the way to October 2019 the price was kind of fluctuating within the 8 to 9 boundary breaking through it uh, at some point however and uh, over here from uh, February 2020 until October 2020 a period of quite notable overall market volatility we see this corridor being different this corridor being 6 to 7 or 7 to 8 dollars the price was keeping within this corridor however breaking through this corridor um, at some point uh, throughout this period, at most notably here in May and here in June. So are these psychological barriers, that is, whole numbers of dollars as a stock price, reliable to guide a technical analysis-driven trading strategy? We'll figure it out just now. To do that, we first of all need to extract what is the whole number of dollars the current price is denominated at, so let's uh, retrieve the quotient of the price and as a denominator we'll pick one so it will return the whole number of dollars that is in the current price so here we have seven dollars as our quotient and here we have six and so on and so forth and uh, right now um 24th of november 2020 we have got ten dollars it has broken through a ten dollar a psychological barrier quite recently and now we also need to figure out the remainder we can either just subtract the quotient from the price or we can use the mod function which is just the remainder of our price and as a divisor we'll also pick one and we have got remainders over here and these remainders will help us identify support and resistance because if this remainder is very close to zero is very low it means that the price is very close from approaching a psychological uh, barrier of a whole number of dollars from above identifying potential support and if this remainder is very high close to one it means that we have identified potentially a psychological resistance level so here we can identify the thresholds how low or how high we require this remainder to be to suspect that there might be some support and resistance action going on so for support let's identify the remainder to be lower or equal to 20 cents per share so the price being at most 20 cents above the relevant psychological barrier for the support to trigger potentially and for resistance the other way around let's uh, require it to be at least uh, 80 cents above the previous support so at most 20 cents uh, from the relevant psychological resistance level and now we can identify whether um, given these thresholds at the particular trading day we are 
moving towards a support line or a resistance line, identified here as a psychological barrier again uh, of a whole number of dollars in the stock price. So for the support, we need to uh, input one, so support identified, if our remainder is less than or equal to the identified threshold. And we need to lock the row over here. So if that indeed is true, we need to input one and zero otherwise. And bottom of that, clicking it all the way down, we can see that there has been uh, 123 situations where support has been identified. For resistance, we can just be lazy and copy this formula across over here, tweaking it slightly, referring to a different threshold and requiring it to be greater or equal to the threshold instead of less than or equal to the threshold. And we can see that across our sample period, two years, we have identified exactly 100 situations where we could suspect resistance going on. And now we also need to figure out whether these support and resistance lines were fulfilled or broken. Uh, broken support would imply that the share price has moved downwards and broke through this whole number of dollars. And for resistance, it would mean that the price has broken upward and the whole number of dollars that are in the price have increased. So here we need to uh, just figure out the change in quotient, that is just subtracting the previous quotient from the current to see if support or resistance were broken. For example, over here, 4th of December 2018, we have got uh, a support light identified because the price has actually quite nearly touched uh, $7 exactly, and the price has moved upward in the next day. So the support has been fulfilled, it hasn't been broken. But the very following day, when the price has been very close to $7 exactly, the remainder was seven cents, and uh, we treat it as relevant support because this remainder is less than 20 cents, we consider it as a relevant support line and suspect it wouldn't be broken the next day, but we see that it indeed was broken, and that means that the support has been violated. So first of all, we need to identify how often uh, support and resistance levels are identified. So we just need to sum the columns because we have identified uh, these support and resistance signals as ones. We just need to sum this column, not including the last observation, however, because we cannot really see whether the support or resistance identified in the last sample day has been fulfilled or not, as we haven't got the data on the share price movements in the next trading day. So keeping that in mind, we just calculate the sum of uh, all signals across the sample up until the last day. And then we can drag it across and see that indeed 123 days with support identified, 100 days exactly with resistance identified. Now we need to figure out how often are these support or resistance lines, psychological barriers, whole numbers of dollars are violated. So we need to count ifs, uh, whether the quotient changed downward in case of support, that would mean that support line is broken, or upward in case of the resistance, it would mean that the resistance level is broken. So we again select the sample period up until the last sample day not inclusive, and we need that to be equal to one, so signal identified, and the quotient change in the next day, so here we select it from the second day until the last, for in case of support, we need this to be equal to minus one for the support line to be broken. And we see that the support line has been broken in 39 out of 123 cases. Then we can copy this formula across, meddle with it a bit, first of all, dragging that across to refer to resistance signals instead of support signals. And here we need to change this one, this one is one into a one because uh, a resistance line is broken if the price moves upward and goes above this whole number of dollars. So we can see that support has been broken in 39 out of 123 cases when it was identified, and resistance has been broken in 35 out of 100 cases when it was identified. And uh, by the sheer virtue of support or resistance being either broken or fulfilled, we just can subtract the number of broken support and resistance signals from the total to figure out how often are they fulfilled. And this picture can already uh, cheer us up because uh, our signals are most likely fulfilled than violated. But bear in mind that these thresholds are quite high. 
it is very likely that the price will just hover somewhere around it, then move whole 20 cents above or below in case of the least uh, notable support and resistance signals that are on the very edge of these thresholds. So to be more sure in these signals working, we also need to identify how often the stock price moves up or down after we receive a particular signal, either support or resistance. And we suspect that we should receive bullish signals after we have got a support because the price will bounce back off the psychological barrier and will receive a bearish signal after resistance, given that the price will bounce downward from the psychological barrier that prohibits it from moving upward. So here we need to calculate the buy and hold returns and we also use it to compare our returns with the returns of the buy and hold strategy. Just applying the simple formula, price today divided by the price yesterday minus one, and bottom line clicking it all the way down. And now we need to count ifs in, first of all, whether we have got a support signal, and then whether the return in the following day was positive. And here we can also include zeros as, again, down means down and up can mean either up or stay in the same. Again, you can include uh, zeros in either category. It wouldn't matter that much. So here we'll see that after a support signal, the price moves up 55 times. And here we can tweak this formula slightly to get the same idea uh, after resistance signals. And then we can again copy these formulas over here and change this to be less than zero to get uh, how frequent the prices move down after a particular signal. And we can see that actually the pattern in terms of stock prices moving up or down is not that pronounced as in case of just broken or fulfilled uh, psychological barriers. For support, the price actually moves down more often than it moves up, which is quite counterintuitive. Well, not exactly counterintuitive, but contradictory to what one would expect if support and resistance were genuinely working. And for resistance, it's the other way around. The stock is actually uh, more likely to move up than down following a resistance signal. However, it doesn't mean that a trading strategy based on these signals is um, ultimately doomed, given the fact that these ups and downs might be of very different magnitudes. You can get a lot of upside and little downside, and that could salvage the strategy and get it uh, to perform quite well, even potentially outperforming the buy and hold strategy. So let's derive a return of a strategy that exploits support and resistance signals right here and compare it to the performance of a simple buy and hold strategy that just buys the stock at the very start and holds it until the very end. So the return of the support and resistance based strategy would be longer in the stock, so it would be exactly the return of the stock if we have identified support and given the fact that support gives us a bullish signal, it's very natural. So if in the previous day we have received a support signal, we just get the return of the stock. And if we haven't received a support signal, we need to check if there was a resistance signal. And if there is a resistance signal, we need to short sell the stock because we have got a bearish signal. So minus the return of the stock. And if there has been neither a support uh, nor a resistance signal, we just get zero because we are unsure in which direction the stock price will move given we only exploit support and resistance signals. And this simple formula will allow us to simulate the performance of a support and resistance strategy across the time period. And now we can calculate its annualized return, its annualized risk, and compare it to the performance of the buy and hold strategy. So given the fact we have got two years worth of data, we can just use product one plus get all of the returns over here, raise it to the power of one half to get annualized return and subtract one and enforce this formula using shift control enter. We see that the buy and hold return for General Electric is a little bit shy of 20% per annum and support and resistance strategy delivers a much higher return of 28% per annum, which is already quite promising. But what about the risk? Well, if we calculate the sample standard deviation of buy and hold returns and multiply them by the square root of 252 to annualize these, we get an annualized risk of 
the buy and hold strategy at very considerable 54.41%, which is quite a high volatility. And if you compare it to the uh, volatility of support and resistance driven strategy, it's quite a lot lower because we do stay in cash uh, for considerable amounts of time and that limits our volatility while not limiting our upside, uh, at least in this particular case. And then we can calculate our risk return trade-off, um, just a simple sharp ratio. We haven't got a risk free rate here, so we just can divide the return by the risk. It would be a good enough approximation. And we see that the sharp ratio of a support and resistance strategy is more than twice higher than the sharp ratio of a buy and hold strategy. Does that ultimately mean that support and resistance works and it's a relevant technical analysis strategy that can help you make money? Not necessarily. First of all, this is gross performance. Net performance would include fees. And given the fact that you quite often uh, either long the stock, sell it back, short sell the stock, buy it back, fees could accumulate and limit this upside quite a lot. Second, this strategy is very assumption sensitive because if you pick different thresholds, for example, if you had picked uh, a more stringent threshold, identifying support only at 10 cents or less and resistance at 90 cents or higher, the return of the strategy would be a lot lower, much, much lower than the return of the buy and hold strategy. And even the fact that the risk is still quite low, the sharp ratio of the buy and hold now is more than twice higher than the sharp ratio of the support and resistance strategy. So all in all, uh, you have to be uh, very careful when identifying or simulating a strategy based on technical analysis as it is very sensitive to assumptions you make and to time period you're applying it to. However, it does mean that technical analysis always fails. Sometimes you can find a hidden gem there in the data that can help you exploit the market and get some considerable returns and beating the market ultimately. And that's all there is for support and resistance, psychological barriers in stock prices, and trading strategies that exploit these barriers. Please leave a like under this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I'm eager to see any further suggestions on videos in business economics or finance you would like me to make. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and click that bell notification button, or support us on Patreon. Thank you very much, and stay tuned.